It is always good to meet as a community in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we begin our celebration, we remind you that our church is a sacred place where we gather to pray in the name of Jesus. Remember to mute or turn off your cell phones. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Brothers and sisters, take to heart the good news. Through the Holy Spirit, the Word of God is able to enter our hearts and transform us into missionary disciples of God's love. Let us now stand and begin our celebration. <clears throat> Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will go by. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Father. I think it's kind of dark in here. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. a little bit more. <laughs> um, it's beautiful, this message today from God is uh, calling us to, to go deep into our very close relationship with Him. Let us prepare ourselves to get rid of all this noise of the world and ask forgiveness to God if something else is disturbing us in our minds and in our hearts to have this encounter with Him. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We, adore you. we We've done. 
Let us pray. Grant us, O Father, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins and stand up and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who had made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against the Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. The responsorial psalm, I will sing of your salvation. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. Be my rock of refuge a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will, I will sing of your, your salvation. salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will, I will sing, sing of your, your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day, your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy, and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, 
believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prof prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. The greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began speaking in a synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Sarathath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel, during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet no one of them was cleansed, but only Nahum, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled, all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him to throw off the hill on which their town has been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. The human being is a, uh, a different steps of growing. Uh, the human life 
begins in conception. That is a nine month time. Then is the birth and we are here, but we are not fully human yet. We are the human race. We are human from the beginning, from the conception. But we are not perfect as the plan of God wants. We need to reborn. We need to join divinity in order to reach the perfect humanity. That's why Jesus came to show us the way. He did it. He himself is God and human at the same time. So that's why uh, the gospel says is the firstborn of the perfect human life. So you see all these steps that we have, we reborn when we receive the word of God. And then uh, we decide, we say yes to him. And then we are kind of a new creature. We are different. Every conversion is a rebirth of a person. And then the final step is when we leave this world forever. And then we arrive when Jesus is waiting for us with our mother Mary. Remember Jesus and Mary, they have the new body. But of course, uh, only Jesus, before he was ascended to heaven, he presented himself with this new body. With this new body that um, the disciples, it was, what's happening? Is this him? Yeah. They saw him new. Some of them didn't recognize him until he began to act as himself. And because that close relationship they have with him, they recognized him. And, uh, and that's why Jesus had to make them touch him. Touch me. I am not a ghost. Touch me. So they touched him and they felt him. And you know, Thomas even touched those uh, scars in his hands and in his uh, side. So uh, when he disappeared, they be began to see it was a ghost. And then I'm sure some of them, they say, he ate a fish, the fish is not here. <laughs> yes, he was not a ghost, a new body, a totally new body with another, with no limits, a perfect body. And we are called to be with him forever with a new body. But the thing is, we need to be faithful to him here in this planet. So it's not a fantasy what we are holding in our souls, in our, in our hope, in our faith. It caused the life of many people. They were killed because they want to maintain. So I think today, in these times we're living in, we need to hold very strongly to our faith because this world is, is becoming more and more aggressive against people with faith, especially Christians. We need to, to come close to God 
to be aware of this call that he's giving us to have this essence of God in ourselves that we know that this world is being possessed by our enemy he wants us to kill ourselves as we see very well how he is misguiding people into killing ourselves they say he is misguiding women oh you are free you have blah blah you see the the uh, human being is very clear in all the in all the the, the scriptures human being begins in conception you see this beautiful beautiful passage in the first reading the prophet jeremiah the word of the lord came to me saying before i form you in the womb i know you before you were born i dedicated you a prophet of the nations i appointed you when we celebrate the coming of Jesus, what day we celebrate the coming of Jesus in this earth? On, the, on Christmas? Or nine months before? You see, Christmas, the birth of Jesus was the 25th of December. But he was here between us nine months before when Mary said yes to God, to the angel. When was that? Nine months before, the 25th of March, the incarnation of the Lord. We're just a couple of months later, we will celebrate the yes of Mary. Same thing with Mary herself. When we celebrate the birth of Mary, September 8. But when we celebrate the Immaculate Conception, nine months before the 8th of December. You see, and uh, when, when Mary answered yes, Jesus began to exist in her womb. Then remember that she ran to find Elizabeth. And then what did Elizabeth say? Who am I that the mother of my Lord came to me? You see? Jesus was only a couple of cells in the womb of Mary. But that was already a human being and a divine being. <laughs> wow. wow. You see how beautiful is the revelation of God. The plan of God for each one of us is... that every human being must be born, must be welcome into this world, a fruit of divine love and human love. And that's why we shouldn't call, you know, it's, it's that confusion of what is love. Love is the essence of God. Is what we receive when uh, when we are reborn it's when we feel when we experience that God loves us that is truth that God loves us now a new life comes to us a new light illuminates our minds and our, our understanding and uh, in that moment 
We are reborn to the love of God. And you realize that God loves you. But the thing is, people say that love is sex. Love doesn't have to be anything with uh, sexual attraction. Of course not. That is for animals. We are more. The love of God is another thing. When Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you, that doesn't include sexual attraction. Jesus did, didn't even use the sexuality of his body. No. And that's why he said, love each other as I had loved you. When you use your sec your, the sexuality of your body without love, you destroy. Destroy people. You see all these very odd violations, um, rapings, how they destroy minds and souls. It's ugly, it's really ugly what happens in that expression of unwanted pregnancies. For me, it's a very diabolical expression, a very satanic expression, unwanted pregnancies. That means that something very bad happened. Who wants Who doesn't want pregnancies, human pregnancies? Satan. Satan hates us. And he wants to destroy us. And he confuses humans to destroy ourselves, to mothers. Destroy your children. Isn't that satanic? It's really ugly. Because, you know, as I told you, the plan of God is that every human being is conceived by the union of divine love and human love. But sometimes people come without human love. And it's very sad. If you feel that you are here in this world because a miscalculation of your parents, because you are an unwanted pregnancy. Well, it's a pity. But you have to be sure of one thing. <laughs> you are not a miscalculation of God. <laughs> you exist. You are here because God loves you. And that is for sure. If, you, if your parents were not at the level of the divine love, it's a pity. But God loves you. And that's the most important thing. And of course, matrimony, the sacrament of matrimony should be that. Humans... They know God, they love God, they accept God, and they want to be with God. So they form and they welcome any human being from conception. You see how peaceful and beautiful and love is that plan? Why we don't want that? Why people want to destroy that plan of God? What is love? It's another thing. We just hear here in this, in this second reading in St. Joseph, I mean St. Um, St. Paul, excuse me. St. Paul, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous, it's not pompous, it's not rude, it's not inflated, never lies. 
And that is, do you want to use your body to love as God loves? Just look at Jesus. Love each other as I have loved you. See, that's a different thing. That is holiness. Holiness is the path of uh, the kingdom of God. And holiness is for everybody. If you see Jesus say that, if you want to see that in, in uh, chapter 19 of the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 19, when he says, well, many humans are not um, prepared for matrimony. Perhaps not. Some of them are not for matrimony from birth. Another were made unable from men. But another group, they uh, dismiss that possibility of getting married for the kingdom of God. Because we already see that marriage is not necessary. That I can bear children of God with the word of God as Jesus did. That is the most beautiful experience. And that is why matrimonies, for example, matrimonies that are, have the plan of God, know the plan of God, they are not just to, to bear human pets. <laughs> the goal is not let them, okay, you have to study, you dress, you go to the university, and you're a good person. Is that all? No. Because you know very well that this world is not a goal. It's just a passage. So you have to prepare your children. You parents, be the angels. Be the person that revealed to them the plan of God. That's the purpose. So they can understand from the beginning what is the plan of God for them. So when they begin to grow, they see what the world is. And they are very well prepared to face the darkness of this world. Even in universities, as I told you, this wonderful guy, that he faced himself with courage, the, um, the mocking of his teacher. Teacher, you are my, my teacher of mathematics. So teach me mathematics and mind your own business. <laughs> when he began to mock him about his faith and believing Jesus Christ and Mary and virginity and chastity and fidelity. <laughs> my goodness, a teacher was mocking because of that. How sad is that. Um, well, this is love. Helping each other. You want to use your body to love as God loves? Help each other. You don't look your own. Hmm? It's not quick tempered. It does not broad over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. That's love. So this is the message now from God. And we know very well, as Jesus said here, Jesus experienced this, as we heard in the, in the, in the gospel. They began to criticize Jesus, and he said it to the, to the prophet today. Be not crushed on their account, for it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass. Yeah. I remember this when, uh, when I hear this, this guy 
answering to his teacher in this way. Teacher, with all due respect, teach me mathematics and mind your own business. All the mocking of the teacher didn't affect you, affect him. It didn't. It was a fortified city inside of him. He cared very well of the treasure that Jesus gave to him. Pillar of iron and wall of brass against this whole earth, this whole world. Are you ready? Are you ready to save this treasure that Jesus gave to you? Do you plan, remember this, this, uh, do you remember the prayer of the, the opening prayer of this mass? I bet you don't. <laughs> It said, grant us, Lord, our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. What a beautiful thing to pray. Honor you with all our mind, intelligence, when, when you don't understand the truth, the treasures of Jesus, we begin to create fantasies. And that is, um, oh, I forgot the word, um, superstition. Christian religion has nothing to do with superstitions. Superstitions are just created by fantas fan fantasy minds that want to create something that doesn't understand. Well, if you don't understand something in the doctrine, read, pray, and understand. Because people will ask you. People will come to the door and ask you to offer you another kind of faiths or perhaps mock you with something that you believe in. Even your own children will ask you, why do I have to go to Mass? Why is baptism? Why do I have to go to confession? Are you ready to answer that questions? Because if you don't answer, another people from the world will come and take you out your children from your faith and they will begin to criticize you you will lose your children so prepare them answer the questions use your mind honor god with all your mind and i remember that passage of of uh, the letter of saint peter saint peter he has two letters, I don't remember which one is, but you find it in the, I think it's chapter three, but I don't remember it's the first of the, or the second reading when St. Peter said, honor God, worship God in Jesus Christ, being ready to give answer to people that question your hope and your faith. Isn't that beautiful? Do we really, are we really ready to give testimony to answer questions about our faith? Now please stand and let us renew the promises of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with all the, our confidence that Jesus gave us to be his priestly people, priestly brothers and sisters, that we can have this ability, and this privilege to bring our petitions in front of the, the throne of our Father, that we can call him Father. So we intercede for all those that are in need especially for the church in these difficult days. And we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may the Lord bless her efforts to send out missionary disciples ready to share God's goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May all who support or participate in a portion experience a conversion of heart to seek and receive the Lord's boundless mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in need of forgiveness, reconciliation, or healing, may the Lord call them to repentance and bless them with healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us to see and truly know the great plans the Lord has for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all the faithful departed. May they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we thank you for this, this opportunity you give us to present our petitions to you with all our loved ones and united with all the church, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we present our offerings.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Pray between that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, name for our good and the good of all his church. church. Father, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Let me receive your offerings. Father, receive the fruits of the hands of your people so they can receive back from you according to their generosity. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might live my love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. No! You are indeed holy, O Father. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A 
risen Lord Jesus Christ is here with us. Let us proclaim this mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of your son's death and resurrection, we offer you this bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Here, under the mantle of protection of the blessed Saint Joseph, humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Father, all your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jaime, our Bishop, and all the shepherds of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we, pray, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, with Saint Joseph, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, united with all the family of saints, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he does not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worth that you enter under my roof, but, but only, only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you with me, that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. We'll be having a parish gathering on Friday, February the 4th at 6.30 p.m. in the gym to discuss the answers of the Synod questions. Everyone is encouraged to attend. Please take a bulletin for information about our parish and for information on events about the diocese. Let us pray.
Father, nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, pray the prayer to our patron, St. Joseph. If you know it, pray it with me. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful week. Thank you, Father. Christ. Christ.